This is the funeral procession of Ghulam Abbas Amiri, held in May 2016 in the city of Varamin in southern Tehran. Amiri was killed in Syria as a member of the Fatemiyun Division, an Afghani unit of the Iranian Quds forces fighting in Syria to save Bashar Assad's regime. According to official Iranian media, Amiri was 15 years old when he was killed. This is another funeral held in April 2016 in the city of Delijan for Mohammad Hossein Rezai, who was 16 years old when he was also killed in Syria. Since the start of the Syrian civil war and the Iranian regime's military intervention, hundreds of underage fighters have been sent to Syria, many of whom have been killed or injured. The use of children in Iran's Syrian campaign is not restricted to just sending them to the front lines. In order to better understand this issue, we need to go back to the eight-year Iran-Iraq war which began in 1980 where the Iranian regime systematically used children in its war machine. According to Iranian officials, 550,000 school children were recruited and sent to the front lines. دوران دفاع مقدس ما 550 هزار نفر دانش آموز طی نوبت های مختلف به جبه ها اعزام شدند و According to official figures 36000 of these school children were killed in the battlefields Each year the Iranian regime organizes ceremonies to commemorate these young martyrs As a majority of these children were not even 15 years old barely able to carry arms they were used as human shields to clear the minefields to pave the way for the adult soldiers whose lives were considered more valuable. One of the children sent to the minefields was 14-year-old Mehrdad Azizolahi, who was interviewed by Iranian state TV. His interviews and subsequent death are glorified by the regime and used in their propaganda campaign targeting children. یکی از برادران کوچکی که در جبهه شرکت کرده سوالاتی داریم و صحبتی باشون میکنیم بطمان پس از معرفی خودتون بگیم که چند روزه در جبهه هستیم بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم من مهداد از زلوهی ازامی از اسفران که مدت تقریبا سه هفته است در جبهه باکرون هستم شما مطمئن بفرمیم که برای چی در اینجا جبهه شرکت کردیم من شغلم تخریب چی هستش یعنی راه باز میکنم و معبر باز میکنم برای برادره که از روی من اوور نکنم و خدا نکرده مشکل برای اینا پیش بیا Let's listen to another interview by young Azizolahi who explains his duties in the battlefields من مهداد عزیزالله ازامی از اسفحان هستم که چهارده سالمه و انگیزه که باعث شد به جبه بیام واقعا اون برادره که قبلا جبهه بودن و می اومدن و برای ما تعریف میکردن که جبهه چه خاصیت ها خوبی داره که مثلا هر کی بره دیگه ساخته میشه از هر لحاظ و دیگه اون ناخالصی هاش و اون گناهش دیگه در اونجا اون در جبهه معصیت دیگه نمیشه من به جبهه اومدم تا شاید بتونم در راه خدا کمک کنم و گناهانمون پاک بشه اینها رو که اراق در محورهای مختلف میخاره تا با آن خونسا کردید و آیا مین کاشتید برای محور خودمون خونسا بله کردیم یک مقدار این ما در عملیات بیت المقدس بود که برای بردران همون فتح قرم شهر مرحله اول و دوم و سوم بیت المقدس بود که ما محبر باز کردیم و اون عملیات رمضان بود که باز معبر باز کردیم تو تیپ نجف اشرف بودیم تا با رفتی برای خودمون این گذاری کنیم؟ برای رفتی هم از نظر امنیتی درست نیست بودم کجا هست During the Iran-Iraq war hundreds of children became prisoners of war in Iraq This is a French TV report of the Ramadi prisoner camp in Iraq which included underage Iranian prisoners of war 
Parmi les prisonniers de Ramadi, il y a un peu de tout. Des civils et des militaires, des vieillards, des adultes et surtout une soixantaine d'enfants dont l'âge estimé par le médecin du camp va de 11 à 17 ans. The war with Iraq and the popular mobilization of troops created a favorable environment helping the Iranian regime carry out its brutal domestic repression, eradicating all forms of political and civil opposition. The war with Iraq further helped the regime to form and recruit ideological fanatics who were loyal to the regime and would work in its security and repressive institutions. This is why Ayatollah Khomeini the founder of the Islamic Republic of Iran, regarded the war as a divine gift, refusing peace deals to cease the carnage. دیدگاهی که حضرت امام بعد از پایان جنگ فرمودند که این جنگ همش برای ما نعمت بود که ما اون موقع ها نمیتونستیم این را بفهمیم ولی این روزها فکر میکنم کم کم قابل فهم هست این حرف تاریخی حضرت امام As for the children, in addition to being used to open minefields on the front lines, the cause of war helped the regime to form and organize them in the repressive paramilitary Basij force units in schools. As the war ended, the regime lost a formidable tool in enlisting ideological war veteran recruits for its oppressive organizations such as the Basij and the Revolutionary Guards. To compensate for the void, the Iranian regime needed to come up with a new way of inspiring the next generation to their cause, hence it created a new campaign called Caravans of Light Tours. Every year for the past two decades, hundreds of thousands of people, predominantly school children, are sent to the old Iran-Iraq war battlefields to commemorate the holy war fought against the great Satan and to honor the martyrs. We were looking for the second year of Dabiristan. We can go to the light of 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 the light. امسال هم انشاءالله همونطور که آقای وزیر اشاره فرمودن از 13 مهر کار اعزام ها شروع میشه و برنامه ریزی شده که ما بتونیم تمام دانش آموزا رو ببریم This is Qasem Soleimani, the chief commander of the Quds Force, accompanying the children on one such tour. He explains the significance of the war in shaping children in order for them to stay loyal to the regime's principles and ideology. جبه اون بهشت گمشده انسان هاست شاید پر جازبه ترین و حقیقی ترین حرکت فرهنگی که می تواند نسل جدید را و نسل جوان را بیمه بکند همین فضای جبه هاست On the tours, a religious and spiritual atmosphere is created and the preachers recount the battles and the heroic actions of the martyrs بیاده مشایخی اون حرف هایی که در شب ودای کربلای پنج زد بیاد اون قلب های پاکی کنار نهرها به عشق امام حسین چه کرد دشمن چه کرد با تو فاطم جان شهدا شرمنده ای The preachers tell the young visitors that the war with Iraq was part of a greater battle against global arrogance led by the U.S. and Zionists, a fight that continues to this day. The visitors are told that the martyrs are alive and watching them and asking them to join the holy war against the U.S. and its proxies. This is how the regime uses the war and martyrdom as a tool to shape and recruit children. اونجا چه حسی داشتی؟ اونجا حس خیلی خوبی داشتم. حس خیلی خوب یعنی چی؟ بله. حس خیلی خوب یعنی یعنی نفس شهدا تازه میاد، نفس آدمو تازه به شهدا میرسه. آدما میتونن شهدا رو لمس کنن. Since early 2016 The Iranian regime has intensified its large-scale campaign of generating public support for its military intervention in Syria 
to invigorate its ideological base and to find new recruits for its war machine and its security and intelligence organizations. In this campaign, the families and especially the children of the Revolutionary Guards killed in Syria play a vital role. The families of those killed are received by the Supreme Leader with the meetings being broadcast on national television. They are invited on popular TV shows where they are hailed as heroes. Recently, even a film festival was organized in Tehran where documentaries about the Revolutionary Guards deployed in Syria, the martyrs and their families were featured. Religious ceremonies, conferences and events are organized to glorify the martyrs and their families on a regular basis. The extensive campaign aims to demonstrate that the martyrs who have sacrificed themselves for a sacred cause are venerated and respected by Iranians and that the regime takes care of their families. This campaign tries to reassure the regime's ideological base that seems demoralized by the Syrian quagmire and the increasing number of casualties. The campaign further attempts to create an ideological and emotional connection between the public and the revolutionary guards killed in Syria and their families. A series of documentaries featuring the wives of the martyrs are aired on TV in which they describe their relationship with their husbands, how much they loved each other, and how their husbands sacrificed all worldly pleasures and their families in order to fulfill their Islamic duties by enlisting to fight the enemies of Islam. To tug at the public's heartstrings and create support, public events where the children of martyrs describe their love for their fallen fathers express their sorrow and explain how deeply they miss their fathers are organized. This is one such event where the commanders of the Quds forces are filmed sobbing for these children. Urdi behesh baraye man maah ke na fasl khater has hikayat aakharin didar اردی بهش بود که رفتی و رفتنت قربت غریب مرا تا همیشه کرد بابا حسین نگاه کن زهرای تو هم چادر سرش گذاشته است The children are also shown crying on their father's corpses Emotive religious music and video clips are produced to highlight the suffering of these children. However, none of this is done out of sympathy or support. Instead, the regime uses emotional manipulation as a way of legitimizing military intervention in Syria and attract young children to its ideology to ultimately recruit them just as they did during the Iran-Iraq war. This is well demonstrated in a video clip that is regularly aired on TV and at public events. A 12-year-old boy is mourning the loss of his father, a member of the Revolutionary Guards who was killed in Syria. The boy's mother and grandfather are shown watching him deep in sorrow. Suddenly, a group of young boys from the paramilitary Basij branch enter the home, chanting and glorifying the martyrs, and explain that the boy's father fought and died for Islam, a fight that will ultimately liberate Jerusalem. They also chant that the children of the fallen martyrs should join the sacred path of their fathers and become soldiers of Islam themselves.
Consequently, the boy is convinced and joyfully joins the other children in their fight against the enemies of Islam. In another official clip, the children are happy that their father is leaving to fight in Syria. They are shown performing the religious tradition of holding the Quran while their father walks under it to bring them protection and throwing water behind them to wish them safe travels and return. Ultimately, the children will follow in their father's footsteps, which is demonstrated at public events where the children show their willingness to join their father's cause of the holy war and ask other children to join them. باش به حال بابای ما که رفته شهید شده اونایی که ما که موندیم چی ما راه شهید علی زادکبر رو ادامه میدیم من دوست دارم که خودم به شهادت برسم در راه امام حسین یه خانمی دیگه به من گفتن که بچت رو باید به سختی بزرگ کنی ولی انقدر خدا رو شکر همسر من محمد مهدی رو خوب تربیت کرده بود که محمد مهدی هرگز از شهادت پدرش ناراحت نیست و بزرگترین آرزوش اینه که خودش هم شهید بشه که اینو دوست دارم از زبان خودش بشنوید بزرگ بشم پاسوشم شهید بشم دوست داری کجا شهید بشید کجا این زهر پدرتون وقتی که میخواست بره سوریه به شما چی گفت گفتش من دارم میرم سوریه جایی که باید برم دوست داری که راه پدرت رو ادامه بدی بله تو وسیعت نمشون هم نوشته گفته باید راه من رو ادامه بدی ما خیلی ما شیعه دوازه امامی هستیم و باید به این امام ما احترام بزنیم خیلی احترام باید بزنیم یعنی انقدر اینا برای ما با ارزشن که ما حتی به هر جون به خاطرشون بدیم مثل بابای عزیزم که به خاطر حضرت زینب تفا از حضرت زینب جون خوش شده